old gypsum board or drywall and the chances are your walls and ceilings are made of it. It's replaced plaster as the wall material of choice. Workers just mount the sheets onto wood framing, plaster the joints, then sand and paint. Gypsum is a natural mineral. Since ancient times, it's been mined to produce gypsum plaster. In fact, there's gypsum plaster in Egypt's pyramids. In 1894, a man by the name of Augustine Sackett patented a board made of gypsum, which he called plasterboard. But it didn't become the norm in construction until the building boom that followed World War II, when busy contractors abandoned plaster in favour of this faster and cheaper way to build walls. The process of making gypsum board begins at the quarry where crews mine gypsum, a soft rock. The loaders dump their haul into what's called an apron. The apron channels the gypsum onto a conveyor, breaking up the big chunks along the way. From there, it's into a giant rotating drum. Within eight minutes, this hot air rock dryer removes five to 10% of the moisture, turning the gypsum white. Next stop is a gas-fired silo, called a kettle. It cooks the gypsum at 150 degrees Celsius until most of the remaining moisture evaporates. Feeding the kettle is a mill that grinds the lumpy rock into what's called stucco, a fine powder, the consistency of wheat flour. In a mixing tank, meanwhile, workers combine water with several powdered chemicals and minerals and a chemical soap. The dry additives give the board the required structure, while the soap creates air bubbles to make the board lighter. In a separate machine, they mix the stucco with an accelerator to make the gypsum set faster. Now they combine the two separate batches, creating a mixture called a slurry. Now they'll form it into a gypsum board, which is basically a slurry sandwich. The bread is this thick, heavyweight paper. As the roll unwinds, creaser wheels, as they're called, score a line about three centimetres from both edges. Then a machine evenly spreads the slurry, like a sandwich filling, between the top and the bottom sheets of paper. Next comes the paper folding operation, which is a company secret and off-limits to our cameras. They fold the edges along the score lines, the bottom edges upwards, the top ones downward, gluing them over the bottom ones to trap the slurry inside. Drops of water smooth out any ridges, ensuring a smooth and even fold. This forms plates, then shapes the folded edges into straight sides. An optical sensor checks the depth of the board's recess. This is where the joint tape is put to connect one board to the next when building a wall. The forming station spews out 305 continuous metres of gypsum board at a time. A cutter now chops that mega board. As the boards exit the cutter, automated prongs flip them to recess side up. Since the recess side will be the wall surface, the factory doesn't want to risk damage by having it travel face down on the rollers that lead to the drying station. The gas-fired hot air dryer is more than 150 metres long and has eight decks. The factory can cure hundreds of boards at a time. It takes 40 minutes to move through the dryer's four temperature zones, which start at 350 degrees Celsius and get progressively cooler. The boards are sold in pairs, so the machinery stacks them in twos, then tapes them together. The tape bears the brand name as well as the size and thickness of the board. 
Standard sizes range from two and a half to just over four meters in length. The tape also tells the consumer what type of gypsum board it is. There's standard drywall for building walls in homes. There's a moisture resistant version for humid areas, such as bathrooms. There's also fire resistant gypsum board, usually required by law for commercial buildings. Now it's your job to make sure you don't hire a cowboy to fit them.